Hey guys, uh, Anthony 4 before Diesel. We got some uh, rotors here, and you can see they're the black. I like the black painted ones because I can't stand when they go rusty. It looks terrible. So this is something a lot of manufacturers have been doing for a little while now. Um, on the this is for the Hilux 2013 Hilux. The brakes changed on the Hiluxes in 2011 when the 17 inch wheels comes out. Everybody knows that except. Uh, some automotive companies that make you measure rotors and stuff like that. But anyway, DF7367S is what we've used. Um, obviously, if it all works out well, then uh, this video will come out. If it's the wrong part number, then it'll be back to the drawing board. So we're going to get these open up and have a look at them. Look, we know where they're probably made. I don't really want to know. Probably where they're all made. But I really like the quality finish on the TRW. TRW is a good brand that generally they're not going to put their name... To rubbish so let's hope that there's a standard oh there's a standard there's even a dob of uh is that a dob of rust in one spot anyway there you go that's flat it won't hurt anything anyway but <laughs> there i am saying about quality and there it is anyway let's have a look at the other side when it says painted what are we talking about here you know how well this is your braking area right but you know how this always goes rusty i don't know why they don't paint this face as well to be quite honest but uh at least they painted that bit because you know it just goes all rusty and it looks terrible so when i replace rotors which is rare mainly on my own vehicles because brakes been there done that that's why you know uh take it to a professional good luck if you can find one or subscribe turn the bell on and learn what you can because a lot of people are doing it themselves anyway so you might as well learn those uh tips that we've got for you that we've shared from being a brake specialist for years anyway let's get these on the vehicle and see what they look like all right to swap over the rotors here on the hilux 2013 right have a look at them they're not too bad they've got some lines in them i don't like the pads i should be changing the pads as well but i want to see what happens with the new rotors we've just got a slight brake pulsation disc thickness variation dtv right it's where the surface of the disc the thickness varies and that's why you feel that pulsating or shuddering through the pedal you can machine the rotors if you get a good machiner on car that's probably the best way to get it because you want to get your run out as close as possible to zero so that you don't have this problem again but what we're going to do in this case is um those trw rotors I shouldn't tell you this 80 bucks each including all right so bargain that's the price get them on special at repco but see the pads they're like new so i don't know what they are i didn't put them in there but they obviously replaced recently but we're going to run them and see what happens they are a bit dusty so they're not that exciting um and if we have any issues with these then what i'll do i'll put a genuine set of pads in that's probably what i should be doing but the value for money man in me can't throw this set of pads away so we're going to keep the old rotors. They could be the original. They could be being replaced at some stage. They could be genuine. I don't know yet. I haven't taken notice. And what we do, we give these a skim. Not as good as on-car machining, but good enough. Ten bucks a rotor. And they'll sit there for next time we have problems. And we'll swap these back in because there's nothing wrong with them. This isn't a performance vehicle. It doesn't need drilled or slotted. Don't waste your money on it. Don't waste your money replacing rotors if you can machine them. Um, if, if they look set, look, these are still really good thickness. Um, to change them what we're going to do we're not going to do what the last people did you can see this brake line here it's got a bit of a bend in it right and it looks like it's been sort of bent and straight it's certainly not factory i can feel it i don't know if you can see it what we need to do to change the rotors on this now the caliper is quite heavy it's very similar to the prado changing the brakes i don't know if we've done a video on that but 12 mil take this bracket out right because then you're on a flexi hose see flexi hose i'd rather not hang this caliper on the hose even though i know the hose can take it the main reason being with it hanging off the hose it's still the weight of the caliper is still going to bend this pipe right yeah i've seen these pipes bent really badly and replaced them because you know they've got bad kinks at corners and stuff so what you need to do is have your tie wire ready which is what i'll organize now i'll hook it somewhere like right there and i'll have a bit of wire hanging down here and i'll lift the caliper over and just stick the wire through there and hang or whatever you want to use and hang the caliper up over there this is a hat type rotor, so there's nothing to do with any dust caps, bearings, anything like that. This rotor will just lift straight off and the replacement will go straight on. But there's a couple of precautions we're going to take before we fit the new rotor. So I'm going to go ahead, 12 mil out, hang up the caliper, and there's two probably 17 mil bolts. See that one there? Mount the whole caliper's got to come off. What mounts the caliper? Two bolts, one there and one down here below it. All right, guys, I'm going to go do that and then uh, we'll have a look and see what's next. So there it is. See? Let's hook a bit of wire in there. All right through the caliper just hanging there it's not going anywhere no stress on any brake lines no bent brake lines right 
The other thing I forgot to mention was, yeah, be before you undo this bolt here, there's another one behind it that goes into the other bracket, another 12 mil. There's two 12 mils. On the Protos, I think it's a 12 and a 10. On the Hilux, it's a 12 and a 12. And this little clip, you can undo it from this side, but it's actually easier just to give it a clip, a quick squeeze. There, and they just slip straight out of the back of this bracket here, right? So nice and easy. Just remember to put it all back in. Again, brakes matter of life and death, so don't go ahead changing your own brakes and rotors unless you know what you're doing, right? So calipers off. Right, there's nothing else holding this on now, so that should just lift off. But look, it won't come off, so you can give a bit of a... Normally you get a hammer for this, but I'll go get one. Just a gentle tap and... Right, and that's basically the deal. And you're left with a hub behind. What's really important here is we give this a clean up, make sure there's no high spots. This is one of the key causes of uh, DTV, disc thickness variation or run out in the rotor. Um, if this surface here isn't clean and free of any high spots, debris. So we'll get the wire brush and give this all a bit of a clean up here. Hang on. Yeah, that doesn't work with gloves, but anyway, let's just see. The gloves on, here we go, that should work. Here we go. Right, so yeah, give this a clean up so that the rotor sits on there flat and flush as possible so that we've got the lowest possible run out. Another good way to have run out is while you're at it, change the wheel bearings, but we're not at this stage. We believe that's the original one. The other side, if you've followed the videos on our Hilux, we've changed the other side because it looked a bit butchered up, but all the in, all this one here looks very original. Looks like the original control arm bushes look good. CVs look good, rack looks good. Everything at this side looks good. Um, so we're not gonna open that up at this stage. I don't believe any damage on the cap. No, it's always good to have a bit of a check. And then you can tell if any, I don't think anyone's been in this side. Luckily, that's why it's still good, right? So we'll give this a clean up and we'll sit the new rotor on. Mate, how good does that look? Another little tip. Once you put the rotor on, if it's not sitting on, it's giving you the ear, it's what you do, you just put one of the wheel nuts on like that and it holds it in place because you need it all the way in and nice and square while you put the caliper back in position. I'm trying to do this without dropping it now, right? So make sure you didn't forget anything, right? You've got your two main caliper mounting bolts. They're basically got to be F-tight. I've never broken one of them, F-tight works. This is not bent any more than it was before, but it's not bad enough that I need to replace it. Don't forget that bolt, nice and tight, you know, 20, 30 newton meters. There's no torque wrench for any of this gear. We've been doing it for years. Just nice and tight for what an M8 is. And you've got your other little bolt hidden behind there, which is why I forgot to mention at the start of the video. That's why you hang around to the end. That one, and of course, clip in your uh, OBS sensor. See that one there? That's the one that we unclip. That's back in. And don't forget to take your wire down, right? So this rubber was already on this side. I'll just a bit of OCD. Got to bring it back out to the side it's meant to be. Okay, so... Basically, you've got your wire, wheel, uh, caliper nuts tight, bang, bang, bolts in, triple check. See what I'm doing? I'm not wasting your time. I'm trying to point out to you. It's really important that you go through and double check this. Make sure the surface is clean. We clean that before we put it on. If you've made it dirty with your hands, clean it again. I clean it too much, you might clean your paint off, as uh, far as I'm concerned. And you might see there what I'll do after I clean that. I'll use the wire brush, give it a good polish up. Then I'll spray it with some inox, and then I'll wipe the excess off. But that's why you can see a little bit of oil that'll help prevent the rust. I did wipe off the excess. It's not going to go all over the brakes. But there's a residual small amount left there that will help with anti-rust corrosion, stuff like that. And next time, you'll probably find that when we take the caliper off, this rotor might just fall off. It might not rust itself on. It was just a gentle tap with a hammer to get it off. Now, so you don't uh, make any damage, you can use like a rubber mallet or whatever you like, or you can actually just tap that that corner of the rotor there where the, so the brake pad's not making contact right there on the top edge corner tap tap on a 45 degree angle is normally enough just to crack it loose anyway guys let's get over the other side or either that or that's the video if you liked it smash the like button we might keep going i'm not sure what we're going to do how good do these look though i'm just hanging to uh get the wheels on and see what it looks like so there's many causes of disc thickness variation which is why the whole reason we're here in the first place changing these rotors and we talked about cleaning the hub. That's one important thing. You need to make sure the caliper's working right, so all the pistons and slides and everything. This is a Toyota, so 99.9999999999. It's gonna be fine. The calipers usually work fine, but you can get a little nick in the dust boot from people changing their pads. Again, all from people, right? And then the dust and dirt gets in, dries it up, and then one of the pistons is a bit lazy, moves a bit slow, or it seizes up and you get tight brakes and blah 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 there's your problem okay pads um, sticking on so one of the really important things here we're about to mention is the importance of the torque of the wheel nuts it's not just so they're not left loose 
so they don't fall off. It's also very important that they're not over tight so that basically um, if they're over tight, a couple of things can happen. The studs you can stretch and damage those, so it's important not to over tighten them. But also think about it. You're tightening the wheel to the hub. If everything's flat, it's all good, but some types of wheels, when you over tighten the studs, because it's only in certain areas, it can actually slightly manipulate, bend and warp the rotor or the shape of the braking surface because they've been so far over tightened. So it varies on the 120s and the Hilux and the Prados. I think I've seen torque specs of 108, 113 is the common one. I like about 110. I think I've seen either side of 110, 108, 113, maybe 118. So it depends what book you look in, which Toyota, you know, Prado Hilux. But they're all the same studs and hubs, more or less. So you know that somewhere around 110 newton meters is going to work. That's what we use, 110 newton meters, and it's always worked. Now, if you don't do them evenly, you risk one could come loose and fall off. If you don't talk them up correctly, they could all work their way loose evenly and slowly fall off and you lose a wheel. So very dangerous if you don't get these things right. Don't touch vehicles if you don't know what you're doing. And if you think you're going to do your own brakes, wheels and tires or any work, you need to subscribe, turn the bell on and do a lot more homework before you do if you're new at this. Okay, same thing here over again on the passenger side. Bang, there's the caliper hanging there, only just. Hanging by its last thread. Anyway, this one, as soon as the caliper came off, oh look, the rotor's loose. That's what obviously normally happens. So this one will be cleaner than the other one because it's uh, been replaced a few months ago. Maybe, what was it, six months ago? Anyway, not that long ago. Let's get this new uh, rotor on this side as well. Okay, check, check. Wire's gone. You know, wire, that one up there that was hanging down. Okay, bolts in and tight, two caliper bolts. That bolt's in, the hidden one behind there's in. The uh, ABS lines clip back in, check everything, make sure you got it right, bada bing, get, take your nut off there before you put your wheel on. You can see the same thing over here, see a little bit of movement, that's alright. Um, you can see the same little bit of oily stuff there, we did the same treatment on that one even though it was in much better condition and now it'll stay like that. Uh, look at that, beautiful, you can see the pads, they're like new, that's why we left them there. But anyway, got the, got the shakes, can't hold it still there. Couldn't hold it still for a second, like that. Anyway, hit that every now and then. It's always been the case. Interesting. Um, wheel on, torque specification, 110 Newton meters, not foot pounds, Newton meters. And lastly, I just want to demonstrate how we've only done the wheel nuts up with a gun to about 100 Newton meters, because we do this quite accurately, and you'll see that by the small amount on each nut that it takes to take it to 110. And that give me any of that opposite thing. The opposite thing is when you first put the wheel on so it goes on square, that's already done. We did that with the gun, right? Now, it doesn't matter what order you do it, look. You can go back there again. Doesn't make any difference because it's up to specification. We've been doing this for decades. We give the information on it. We don't need to be corrected. If you think we've left something out, watch the other videos. Because as I've said in previous videos, this is just one piece of the million piece jigsaw puzzle. You need to put it all together. Thanks for watching guys. That's the video. The wheels are on. Hang on a minute. We need the cap to make it look good. It's a bit dusty. Let's see. Get it nice and square. See those points there? And then it'll generally go straight on like that. Right? Nice and square. See that? They've got to line up. Look at that. Beautiful thing. Thanks for watching guys, hopefully that's helped, catch you on the next one.